Hello. So in this few, uh, video, I just want to look at a, just a broad overview of finding confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for two population proportions. All right. So for confidence intervals, essentially now, remember before, let me just compare for one proportion. What you did is you found a sample proportion, right? And you add or subtracted a margin of error, which looked like this. All right, and then filling that in, you found p hat times 1 minus p hat over n, right? So square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. Now for two proportions, just to kind of compare, now you're going to have the difference in two proportions. All right, so you have population 1, so you take a sample from that and get a sample proportion from that. Population two, sample proportion from that, and subtract the two. And so once you subtract the two, then you add or subtract z times, and here you have p hat one, one minus p hat one over n one, plus p hat two, one minus p hat two over n two. Okay? So this is, and these are given to you. They either have to give them to you outright or give you the part of the total. Like they may say 7 out of 20 people or they actually give you the percent. And then here they may have, say um, 9 people out of 13 or whatever. And you find the percents, subtract them, add or subtract the Z multiplier. You look up the Z multiplier in this T table. But remember you're going to use degrees of freedom of infinity. right? So here DF is infinity because remember this is a yes-no trait. You don't have T distributions. It's a normal distribution underlying this. And then you have the standard error for this, and there's a special video just on standard error. It tells you how to do that. Now, if you're looking at hypothesis tests, all right, for hypothesis tests, you're going to start out with your hypotheses. Hypotheses. And remember, there's a special video on that. But essentially, in your null, you're probably going to have the difference of the two is zero. And again, if the difference between two things is zero, it's because you're saying they're essentially the same, that there is no difference. right? And then some alternative, so you're going to have either P1 minus P2, either greater than, less than, or not equal to zero. Conditions are the same as they are for a yes-no trait. Uh, independence, the outcome of one trait doesn't affect the outcome of another, random sampling, and then within the samples you have to have at least 10 yeses and 10 noes. So, but you have to do it for both populations now. So you just do it twice. And you also have to assume that the actual uh, populations are independent. So you just have to watch out for things like before and after tests. Obviously if you're looking at the same person before something and then after something, that's not independent. But just that they're independent populations. But the conditions are the same for both. You just do the same thing you did for one proportion, just do it twice. Now, your model then, though, is a little different in that in the center is always zero. That's your null. You're assuming the two groups have the trait at the same rate, and so therefore the difference is zero or they're the same. Right? And then you use the standard error, the pooled, this is pooled, Right? So again, look at that standard error video. It's the standard error that's pooled. And you basically add it three times, subtract it three times. And of course, you're going to have positive numbers here and negative numbers here, but they're going to be the same numbers. But these are positive, these are negative. And then you're seeing, then you actually test this by finding your specific p hat 1 minus p hat 2. And just be sure that you're subtracting them in the same order that you set them up in. And you're going to get that you're going to get some kind of percent, right? And then you're going to see where does that fall on my distribution? Is it close by? If it's close to zero, that means it's likely that there is no difference between the two groups. And so then I would not reject my null and there's not enough evidence for the alternative. But essentially, or if this difference is way far away, either here or here, then you say, oh, I don't think that zero is true, that the difference is zero. I think that there... I would say I would reject my null, and then I'd say there's strong evidence that there is a difference between the two populations, and so I would say whatever the alternative is, there's strong evidence for that. 
And so in your test, you're going to basically say how far is your sample difference, right? Your sample differences, so p hat 1 minus p hat 2. How far is that from 0? Now, this is just theoretical, right? Over the standard error that's pooled. And that's how you're going to get your z-score, some z-score, right? And then from there, you're going to do normal CDF from whatever z-score 1 to z-score 2. And you get a percent, which is your p-value. It's the probability of getting the sample differences, the sample difference that you saw. And now here, this structure here, I'm, you really don't need this zero. It's really theoretical. I'm saying we're talking about differences, sample differences. So I want to know how far is this sample difference from my mean. My mean is zero. So I'm just doing sample value minus mean over standard error to keep that basic structure. But it, this doesn't affect the arithmetic, obviously. And once you get your p-value, you're going to compare the p-value just like you did before in your conclusion. The p-value to your significance level, you either reject or you don't reject the null, and then you write. Maybe there either is strong evidence or there's not enough evidence for the alternative. So essentially it's the same, it's just got a lot of small differences. Okay? Thanks so much for listening.